A sail is a complex engine that transforms wind power into propulsion. Sails enable the miracle of sailing. There is little to equal the combinations of satisfaction and challenge, joy and competition that sailing provides. The first time two boats were in sight of one another, you can bet one sailor tried to go faster than the other. Game on. Sailing evolved by innovation of holes, rigs, and sails, a growing comprehension of unseen forces, and runaway technology. Fast forward from Dow's to America's Cup Thoroughbreds. The better the sail, the more efficient the shape, and the more stable it is, the more drive for not a win. Sails for long passages have one set of requirements. Here we go again. Whoa, 25 knots. How is that? I think we're going quite well. Sails for smaller boats have different characteristics. As an inquisitive 14-year-old, Lowell North began reinventing the sail. Fifty years ago, he started the company that bears his name. His was a scientific approach backed by on-the-water testing that has been advanced in the last 20 years under new ownership. Consider this. 11 of the 12 America's Cup challengers in 2007 used North Sales. Celebrating 50 years of fast. I thought when I started making sales that I knew what a sale should look like. So, and sales were pretty, really bad when I first started making sales. To make a better sale was far easier than it is nowadays. After cotton went away and Dacron came into play, Sail making became a little bit more of an engineering problem than it was a, an art. I was just thrilled to be around Lowell and, and watch him and, and try to learn from him. I, I never really knew what, uh, why he was doing something, but I was quick to copy it. I didn't have to know. I just know if he was doing it, I wanted to be the same. Lowell approached a, uh, a, a fun game in a very disciplined fashion. I mean, Lowell's background is that he was a scientist and he really cared about what made sailboats go fast and he used his scientific background to approach the art of what had been an art heretofore of sailmaking in a scientific fashion. And he understood a couple of things, uh, one of which is that testing and actually sailboat one-on-one -on -one to find out which product was better is a serious applicable technique. And if you work at it hard enough, you will find out which way this sail or that sail is better. 1957, near the San Diego Yacht Club, Lil North opened his first loft. It would have been sooner, but first he had to finish school. He and a sail he recut won the Star Worlds with Skipper Malin Burnham in 1945. Malin invited me to crew for him because he figured my sail was maybe a little better than his sail. So the only reason I could beat Malin in light air was because I had a better, better sail, a mainsail. And that's because I'd taken it apart about 20 times. So you can have the talent just to touch the helm and feel the wind, like the uh, Malin Burnham type, or you could build a uh, faster machine like Carl Eichenlaub, or you could figure out really how, what makes it tick and get ahead that way, and that was Lowell. And so I needed uh, to have tigers that would uh, go out and do it a little better than anybody else would do it, so I collected a bunch of tigers. I just picked people that had uh, mostly won medals in the Olympics and other yachting world championships. So you might notice that most of my Tigers were all champion sailors. Well, they shared the same passion he did, and that was the passion for winning sailboat races. And I think the common denominator was that, that they loved uh, sailboat racing and they had the passion for sails. Finn Olympic silver medalist, engineer, and attorney Peter Barrett was North's first Tiger. I asked Peter Barrett if he would like to be a sailmaker. And he said, yeah, well, as a matter of fact, I've been building sails in my basement. We made a deal on the back of an envelope, and a few months later, Peter flew out with his family to San Diego and took a quick course in how we built sails. So uh, you might say the light dawned. All I have to do is find people like Peter Barrett and send them out to do their thing. More Tigers, Charlie Rogers and Dick Deaver flank Lowell. The late Tom Blackaller, Kiwi Tom Schnackenberg. Jim Alsop. <laughs> and John Marshall. 
precepts in the sense of covering the basin. Lowell was the guy that would quietly go about his business knowing what had to be done to make the boat go faster, not looking for any credit. Just, uh, he, 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 had, he had it, whatever it is, he had it. Like many things, the sailmaker's art is materials dependent. In the early days when cotton was the only choice, working on the heavy, unyielding material took powerful hands. Piecing together the huge sails kept teams of sewers busy for months. Nearly 100 years later, more stable synthetic fabrics made the work lighter and the product more efficient. But arduous handwork with needle and palm was still a mainstay of the trade. And the sewing machine was still the workhorse needed to join all those flat panels whose edges were carefully cut into design curves. A new approach was needed. Scientist Heiner Melder provided the spark that gave testing a new look. So we went out sail testing. And we did about three or four days of testing sails on a soling. And uh, Heiner thought that was a pretty crude way to, to test sales, and he said, you know, I'll, he said, I think I could do this analytically. And I said, Heiner, if you could do that analytically, uh, you could probably make us both rich. Using a flow code computer program, Meldner quickly picked the same sale it had taken north a month of on-the-water testing to select. Later, University of Auckland's small wind tunnel proved very effective for testing scale model spinnakers against one another. Team New Zealand's downwind sails by North were the best in 2000. Advanced computer modeling made sail shapes even better. Laminar flow programs allowed for a minute adjustments in shape. This was a boon for designers in pursuit of the perfect sail. Cutting machines were another step in the quest for perfection. The materials had improved. The computer allowed for very sophisticated design work, but these subtly shaped sails were still being assembled on flat surfaces. In 1977, Lowell North was named Skipper of America's Cup Challenger Enterprise. The mainsails he built had oversized roaches and scallop lighter weight leeches. His mylar laminated jibs were a breakthrough. While both proved to be the way of the future, there wasn't time to work out their kinks, even with sail testing a top priority. In 1980, North Sails won the cup for the first time on board Dennis Connors Freedom, Connors' tactician, a sailmaker named Tom Whidden. When Australia won the cup in 1983, the wing keel wasn't the only key. And so that the sails that uh, Tom Shackenberg built for the Australian boat were probably as important as the winged keel, even though the keel got all of the uh, publicity. Look at that. In 1983, the America's Cup traveled to Australia, and Peter Barrett put in a call to Terry Kohler. He called me and he said, Terry, how'd you like to buy North Sails? And I said, you got to be kidding, Peter. I, I, I've already bought plenty of sales this year. You know? No, he said, the whole ball of wax, the whole company. And I said, I know you're kidding now. So that, that, anyway, that's how the conversation started. Kohler bought the company from Lowell North. Then President John Marshall moved to the board of directors and suggested Sobsted Sales Tom Whidden replace him. Former arch rivals, the two gained respect for one another by racing in two America's Cups with Dennis Conner. Tom got the nod, and I'm sure that Terry looks back on that as a pivotal uh, move for North Sales because then uh, this, Tom was able to take them into the, uh, another level. The first suggestion that perhaps Tom wouldn't have be a good possible uh, uh, addition to North Sales came from John Marshall to me. His observation was that, that Tom Wooden was probably the most powerful individual in the sailing community in terms of his ability for, of leadership and, and uh, sailing selling. I think Lowell figured that anybody that could make a sailboat program work or make a sailboat go fast could also be a good businessman. The culture that, that Lowell had set up was a very strong one, one that was uh, dynamically interested in improving the product, the sales, through the process of testing and engineering. And I felt that the, the biggest single risk there was going to be that I would lose that culture because of my imposition of, of new management techniques. And I just felt that as long as we were stuck in that paradigm, there was no sort of technological approach to manufacturing sales. We took an approach just how Lowell North would have done it. One foot in front of the other, science-based, um, 
bringing consultants and technology experts from outside our field in? Well, uh, Tom Whidden had uh, a couple characters from Switzerland arrive on his doorstep saying they wanted to make sales on, uh, on a mold just like boats are made. And I actually hired him and paid him to, uh, to develop the idea. And it really was the beginning of what we call 3DL. And they actually worked. And the fact of the matter is that we then took the technology and invested the serious money it took to, to put that in place. What I'm the most impressed at is that we had a bunch of can-do people that said, we're going to get this done. And, and we've never been satisfied. We've always said we can get better at this. He had the guts to push us higher and faster than we ever would have before. His pushing and his expertise and his intellect took us a long ways. Finally, the missing manufacturing link between the sophisticated computer-assisted design programs and the finished product was created. It's called 3DL. Because the computer-driven process requires a large facility, it's located in Nevada where there's lots of space. Sales are built on precisely shaped molds. High modulus aramid or carbon yarns are laid down to prescribe stress patterns. Workers are suspended over the mold. Certainly our work with the Volvo teams and the America's Cup teams has allowed us to stay ahead. So much technology comes from outside our industry into the game through those, through those avenues. Um, and, and it trickles down. Norse merger with diamond sales in Europe dramatically increased the size of the company in 1995. The European principals involved were Eve Anderson, Jens Christensen, and Hedrick Sutherland. Sales for ocean racing that are fast around the world also must be able to endure flying weeks at a time. Sales for the famed America's Cup match race around the buoys can be built to a lighter, faster edge. Every sailor benefits from the results of all this technology. We almost compete against each other inside the company. We want to come up with newer ideas and newer applications and newer something or others that are somehow or other going to enhance the total product for everybody else as well. Norse's latest technology is an evolution of 3DL called 3DR. Sails are laminated and reinforced with pre-preg yarns over a 36 foot by 8 foot rotating drum. The system is both fast and compact. The yarns are configured for the predicted load pass of the sails. 2200 computerized pistons manipulate the drum surface to create sail shape. Yarn patterns are intricate. Yarns can be any material the customer desires, including aramid, pictured here, and carbon fiber. After bonding by heat, the laminated sail blank comes off the cylinder. Computer-driven markers designate the sail's edges. The slow-mo dance of the yarn heads. 3DR is a faster process than 3DL. The jib for a 32-footer can be made under two hours instead of two days. The machinery takes up less space. The sail blank produced can contain several sails. The excess material is cut away and the sails are finished with traditional hand sewing. Smaller classes like the Melgus 32 have embraced 3DR. The length of the 3DR cylinder determines maximum foot length. When the 3DR process evolves, bigger classes like the TP52 will be able to take advantage of this technology. Many of the New York Yacht Club's Club Swan 42s are sailing with 3DL sails and 3DR is certainly in their future. Soon, 3DR will encompass the full range of race boats. Imagine being able to order a mainsail 90 feet on the left and having it ready in three days, maybe even sooner. In the spring of 2007, Norse's impact on the world of sailing was felt in Valencia, Spain, where 12 teams gathered for the 32nd running of the America's Cup. Sails by North powered 11 of those 12 teams. The who's who of the sport, past and present, were there. It was sailing's version of a night at the Oscars. Olympic gold medalist Ben Ainsley, North Sales president Tom Whidden, Prada skipper Francesco DeAngelis, three-time Olympic gold medalist Jakin Schumann. What a night! Owingi's winning helmsman Ed Baird. All the team colors were well displayed. We are going to go ahead and have everybody who's been a part of the North family over the last 50 years at one place or another, somewhere in the world, to come up here and gather around because we want to have a picture. Bob Greiser does the honors. And now that is some collection of talent, and there are probably as many who weren't on hand. In your wildest dreams, 
50 years ago, did you think North would be where it is today? No, I had no wild dreams that wild. 